Let's go for textures. Ah, uh, tessellated. Okay, that's tessellated. Now, this is a brush that will stay the same color, actually uses the same pattern consistently, as you can see. It's a consistent pattern. Um, I wouldn't call this texture, I would call this a pattern. Bigger, same size pattern. It just covers more of an area at once. But yeah, it's the same size pattern. Uh, Tarkeen. Okay. Here's another pattern. And again, even if you go over it, barely gets a little darker. And see how big. Well, maybe not. It also changes a little. The spots go differently. But this looks like, um, quarter. Nope. Looks more like canvas. Yep, canvas. Okay. Kurawang. Kurawan? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's give it a try, though. Oh. I like this. This is pretty. This one has a texture that it can be inconsistent if you're going over it. And again, if you see the white, this white area here, it's staying the same. It's just got a little bit darker, which means it's a fixed pattern. But I don't see the repeat yet. Do you? Ah, there's the repeat. I see the first one. Here's the first repeat, right here. You can see it again here. I can't see another repeat there. Well, no, yeah, here and here. Close enough. <laughs> For coming. It moves, it angles, but I don't know how random it is. Whatever, it's a nice, it's a nice background, nice texture. Signet, oh, ain't that cute? I want color on this one. Oh, isn't that pretty? Lighter, light touching. Light to dark. Changes color with preference. Let's see, does this have a background? Yes, it does. You can see it very faintly. You can see the pattern here. I like that. And I like the way the edges are very... um. Abstract. <laughs> However, you can, uh, I think you can see a repetition on this. Let's see. All right, let's see what we have. Do we have a repetition here? Ah, uh, close enough, but we got one here and we got one here. And we have one here. And then it goes upside down and you get one here and you get one here. Interesting. So it does have 
repetition. I mean, it's hard to have a, a brush without repetition because I want to show you. This is the brush studio right here. This is where you create your brushes with stroke path, with stabilizing, with tapering, with the shape. This is the shape of the brush. And it's going to repeat. But they, he said it so that it changes consistency, you know, from dark to light, and it rotates. Though you can still see the tiny little dots that are the same. I can't make this larger. And there's a grain. This is what we saw in the background. This grain here. I don't know if you can see it. And rendering, whether we have a flowing and blending, wet mix, color. You can, oh, you can make this so multicolor, uh, it'll look like a circus. <laughs> it really will. It'll be rainbow. Uh, then the dynamic of speed or jitter. Jitter means changes size, actually. Um, you can set the angle for your Apple Pencil. You set the properties. If you want to look at it as a stamp review or as a brush. And what materials are you going metallic? And you can have a source. You can go in here and you can import a source. There's a source library as well as you can import a photo or a file. But this is a source library. And this would be for metallic. This is what you want your metallic to look like. I want it to look like like this. Uh, how do I cancel that? Um, the other is roughness. So if you want it to have a little rougher look, you can add a, another on top of what you've got. And you can add, here, I want rougher. And it changes. It, it changes how the brush looks. You can create almost any brush you want. And then, of course, who made it? And there is a spot, if you see the, at the bottom in the middle there, it says, Reset All Settings. Um, with the Procreate ones, if you reset all settings, it'll just go back to this default. Um, with others, some people have not saved uh, Reset. So if you change their brush, it's never going to go back to the original until you upload another one into Procreate. I'll go into more about the brush studio at another time. Let's get back to the brushes. All right, next we have Melaluca. Melaluca. Ah, oh, isn't that pretty? Yeah, that has a nice pattern to it. Oh, that's a nice texture. Can we see that? Can we see this pack, this texture? From here, this, right there. And you've got the same thing here. And the edges are uh, crinkled. <laughs> Press dark. Ooh, up. this is straight up and down. It goes completely black. Sideways, you can relax the pressure. But I'm doing this very lightly. Nice. I like that. That's a nice texture. And we are on textures. Dove Lake. Okay, Dove Lake needs to be blue. Oh, isn't that pretty? Except for one thing. Can you see it? I can. Repetition right here, right here. It's a pattern, a consistent pattern. So the only way it will vary uh, is probably by pressure, by, by whether it's lighter 
or darker. But otherwise, if you use the same consistency, set the opacity to light, it'll stay light until you lift your pencil. Because this I know always happens. If you lift your pencil, it'll make it, you, you'll, it increases the color, just as if you were adding more paint. Very nice. That's a nice texture. Okay, rectangle. Ooh. All right, now I'm not, if you can see me, I'm tangoing right here. But <laughs> rectangle. Oh, it's a big one. Well, it's rectangular in shape. We can see that. Make it a little bit smaller. Again, it's a very nice texture. Let's make it big. And again, you can see the repetition here. You can see this repetition. Right here, and here, and here. It's staggered, even here. It's staggered, but there's still a reputi repetition in it, as you can see. But I like this. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> this is another pretty one. I, they have such a nice, pretty textures. Grit roll. Okay. Aha! I think I was... Look at that, it's like a ribbon. When you go that way, and it's thin. You go that way, and it follows the brush. So you press hard. This changes uh, opacity with pressure. That's really light pressure. Oh, it's very sensitive. So it will go dark in a mad second. I would lower the opacity on this before playing with it. See, that's a different opacity. But it does make for a solid if you go over it. So I wouldn't do it as a solid. I would do it with half light. You know, you want to see that. Maybe single strokes. Um, maybe a ribbon. Not pretty. It's This is a ribbon style. But I like the fact that it's got these ragged edges. Now we have grid, which is just a grid. We have decimals, which is just a bunch of dots. We have diagonal, which, guess what? <laughs> we have Victorian. Ooh, isn't it? Makes a nice wallpaper. We have wood, which actually looks like wood paneling. We have cubes. which you can do this way and make solid chevron. But I like that. This is, this is cool. You can get different looks with different pressures, different sizes. Here's a rosette. Uh, you have to do very light to see it because as you can see it, it goes very dark here when pressed but uh, it looks like a bunch of reverse dots to me <laughs> but it does change intensity opacity with um pressure doesn't change size though 
Uh, last but not least, my favorite, <laughs> grunge. Let's go grunge. This is grunge. And you see, it's changing direction, which is what causes it to make the different lights and dark areas, the texture. All right. We, I think we have one more time. Well, all right, let's show you vintage. It's vintage time. Myrtle. <laughs> I love that name. Okay, Myrtle is, how good does Myrtle get? Uh, again, Myrtle is a pattern that will get darker as you go over it. But it looks like sprinkles <laughs> to me. But there is a pattern to it, as you can see. Uh, honey eater. Oh, gosh. No. Ah. Honeycomb. It looks like squares. Okay, but... That's the pattern that they're using. That's the shape. So you still have the edges, which are very raggy looking. So, yeah, I guess, you know, it depends upon what you want to do. It's a nice texture, very vintage. <laughs> Next, I know I giggle a lot. Galaxies. Ooh. Another one that gets bigger or darker as you go over it. Look at that. I finally lifted my pen and it went all to almost one color, one opacity. This is light right here. That was holding it very lightly. This was holding it as I normally would with this regular pressure. This was in between pressure. But again, um, it's a set pattern. Campania. That's what it says, Campania. Because it's the C. But I know how to put Oh. Light strokes. Dark strokes. Filling in. We got dots again, but these are different. These leave more space between them. Like even here. Uh, yeah, even here, a little more space. Here's a little more space. Even on the darkest there's still space. Cool, huh? All right, next is <laughs> wedge tail. How, how about another color? Let's go for uh, uh, purple or blue. More blue, purple? No. I want blue, purple, purple. There we go. Wedge tail. So it's a flat brush which follows how you stroke. Uh, light pressure lowers the op opacity. Darker pressure increases it. Let's see the largest it can go. Whoa. 
I would use this as a stamp. That's what low opacity. Interesting. But you see, it makes it almost solid. But it's liquidy. I, as you can see, the the the, the following it, it lightens up because there's you know it's diluting the color. And yes, there is a a a, a setting for dilution. Groovy. Ah, <laughs> this is definitely groovy. I love this. I'm going to put do something. I'm going to put this on drawing guide. I'm going to put it on symmetry and watch what happens. <laughs> what happens on one side happens on the other. That is so cool. But I like this. This is cool. Let's see what happens. You go straight down. Oh, I thought I turned that off. You go sideways. You go angled. It looks even cooler. Very interesting. Let's turn the symmetry off. Okay. Ah, and so this is a this is definitely groovy. Uh, I have to clear this. Okay, next one is bolt. I'd say this is a lightning bolt. And look at the way it changes colors. And it's from purple to pink to almost coral. Oh, that's very pretty. It's pressing harder. It's making it bigger. But it has very light opacity. And if you want to use it as a stamp, there you go. You can just go, I want a Z. Oh, yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> you know? uh, and that's the biggest size. You press harder, up, straight up and down. Sideways. Actually, it mixes opacity and dark, dark and light. So, oh, look at the edges. The edges here are little. Are little uh, triangles. Very cute. You got a straight edge here and triangles here. Nice. Very nice. Uh, fever. This changes opacity with pressure. But it's this is also a set pattern that will only get darker. It won't change how these this design works. It won't change this. 
design here. But it's cool. It's a nice background. Newsprint. Uh, okay. We all know that newsprint is pixels. So, in the news. Okay. This also changes opacity with pressure. Light, dark. And, oh, look at that. That's the, uh, the shape being used. More dots. But these dots are different. These dots, you know, they are, they're the same, offset. They're different shape, though. There's something, I think it's the white in between, the lighter color in between the circles that make the difference. Because this doesn't look like the ones we tried before that were up there. Buzz. I have no idea what buzz is, but it's pretty. Oh, look at that. See, if it, if it moves a little, you get a, a, a 3D effect. <laughs> if you, this is, this is uh, twice. Um, this is once. That's one tap. These look to be four taps. It's hard to just hit one and hit it so you get the darker. As you get dark, it's going to slide. But it's a very nice brush. It's got a cool edge. I like the way it leave streaks when well, you know me and streaks <laughs> by now but the edge is different it's like layers like boxes very cool because each streak as you can see looks like it has several uh lines to it when you put the boxed boxes <laughs> to, uh, in one line, in one straight line. Okay, next is Disco! Disco, Disco Man. Look at that. That's Disco, alright. Let's see, how big does this get? Oh! Light pressure makes it smaller. Darker pressure makes it bigger. And it's dual colored. Ah, that's disco. Change the color. And yeah, something different. I like this. I use this in one of my paintings. This is called Rad. It's different. It's very different. Let's see what the pattern is. That's the pattern. Apparently it changes size as well as opacity. Because this one was small. And I guess if you... Yeah, it's changing size. Not a lot. But that's cool. That's... Rad. <laughs> oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is so much fun. And the last, but not, well, not the last, the last in vintage is flower power. So flowers have to be red. And yellow. 
another color changing one. And pink. Oh, and this is nice. Look at that. Flower power. Oh, I like this. <laughs> I like this that you can do these. What is the pink? There it is. I'm doing it sideways. That you can overlay them like this any way you want. Or just spread them. Oh, look at that. Light. Oh, wait a minute. It was doing it before. Ah, it reacts to speed. And yes, there is a setting for that too. Smaller, larger. Let's make it a little smaller. Smaller, because I'm doing this faster. Doing it slower, and it's a different size. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, we finished with the vintage library, and there's a, one more left that came with, and this is water. Um, let's see how it reacts. This is called water, oops, bleed. This is very watery. Oh, look at that. That is, <laughs> that is watery. I like that. The way it changes opacity. Um, it follows. So if I go at a normal pressure, it comes, it starts light, and then goes dark. That's interesting. I like that it's only on one side. This is, it's different. I like that. That's water. A wet sponge. I'm not a wet sponge. Oops, put the color up. This is the shape, and it rotates. It also changes opacity. Let's see it a little smaller, which is why you have the liquidy part. It, it changes opacity, not um, distinctly. It bleeds into each other. You know, again, dilution. Nice. <laughs> That's another cool one. Okay. Wet gla glaze. Okay, let's see. Do the biggest first. This too is another one that changes color with pressure. Very pretty pattern. Very pretty stamp we're using here. See it at a real size. I'm going from very light to dark, to more pressure. Ooh, to red. <laughs> and it's very smooth, except for the edges. Whoop. I say whoop a lot, don't I? Which are raggy, but really cool. Uh, this is a nice one. I like the fact that it easily goes from light. Mm, to dark. To darkest. Very nice. All right, we have a wash. A wash is usually used in watercolor when you want to just wash 
the canvas, the paper, with a color. Whoa. That's a big brush. Okay, if I were to wash, though. And you can go darker or lighter by going over it. Pressure. Very good. And this is washing the paper. Putting a, a watercolor wash on it. Oh, we have more splashes. <laughs> These look more like paint splashes rather than watercolor. They're not, unless we make them more opaque. No, less opaque. Nope. But again, you don't want to, you only want to use this once or twice. Because it, it, it's, it's too uniform. And when I look at a painting, I look to see if it was done on a, whether it's digital or not. And you can usually tell. See, now, nobody's going to splash like that where they all look pretty much the same. Even if they're, they are getting bigger and smaller and, you know, different sizes. They still all look the same, like they splattered. So I would use this once. I just made a splash. Um, next is water flicks. Again, once. Yeah, you wouldn't use this as a brush. You would use this as a stamp. Too big. Again, it's rotated. But there's the pattern that is repeatable. So it doesn't look realistic. Once as a stamp is what I would do. Here's a blotch. I just dropped a blotch of paint. Look at that. Harder, it's bigger. Uh, another one. It's a stamp. Use it as a stamp. If you notice that the picture here on the, um, the actual... I did it again. The actual uh, stamp. It looks like a stamp. This up here looks like a wash. So this is a brush. And these are to be used as stamps. And here's another water drip. Again, use it once. Use it too many times. <laughs> it's too uniform. It looks too much the same. That's the, the drawback to... Um, digital drawing. In order to get that natural look, you have to have a lot of different splish, splash, splatter stamps. <laughs>